Burhanuddin Rabbani was an Afghan politician and teacher who served as president of Afghanistan from 1992 to 2001. Born in the Badakhshan province, Rabbani studied at Kabul University and worked there as a professor of Islamic theology. He formed the Jamiat e Islami at the university, which attracted then students Gabud and Hekmatyar and Ahmad Shah Massoud, both of whom would eventually become the two leading commanders of the Afghan Mujahideen in the Soviet Afghan War from 1979. Rabbani was chosen to be the president of Afghanistan after the end of the former communist regime in 1992. Rabbani and his Islamic State of Afghanistan government was later forced into exile by the Taliban, and he then served as the political head of the Northern Alliance. An alliance of various political groups who fought against the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. After the Taliban government was toppled during Operation Enduring Freedom, Rabbani returned to Kabul and served briefly as president from 13 November to December 22, 2001. When Hamid Karzai was chosen as his succeeding interim leader at the Bonn International Conference. In later years he became head of Afghanistan National Front, the largest political opposition to Karzai's government. On September 20, 2011, Rabbani was assassinated by a suicide bomber entering his home in Kabul. As suggested by the Afghan parliament, Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai gave him the title of Martyr of Peace. His son Salahuddin Rabbani was chosen in April 2012 to lead efforts to forge peace in Afghanistan with the Taliban. Rabbani, son of Muhammad Yusuf, was born in the northern province of Badakhshan. He was a Persian-speaking ethnic Tajik. After finishing school in his native province, he went to Darul Uloom e Sharia, a religious school in Kabul. When he graduated from Abu Hanifa, he attended Kabul University to study Islamic law and theology, graduating in 1963. Soon after his graduation in 1963, he was hired as a professor at Kabul University. In order to enhance himself, Rabbani went to Egypt in 1966, and he entered the Al-Azhar University in Cairo where he developed close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood leadership. In two years, he received his master's degree in Islamic philosophy. He resumed his position at the university and became closely associated with his fellow professor, Golan Muhammad Niazi, whom he served as secretary in 1969 and 1970. Rabbani was one of the first Afghans to translate the works of Syed Qutb into Persian. Later he returned to Egypt to complete his PhD in Islamic philosophy, and his thesis was titled The Philosophy and Teachings of Abd al-Rahman Muhammad. Jamie. In 2004 he received Afghanistan's highest academic and scientific title academician from the Academy of Sciences of Afghanistan. Rabbani returned to Afghanistan in 1968, where the High Council of Jamiat e Islami gave him the duty of organizing the university students. Due to his knowledge, reputation, and active support for the cause of Islam, in 1972, a 15-member council selected him as head of Jamiat e Islami of Afghanistan. The founder of Jamiat e Islami of Afghanistan, Golan Muhammad Niazi, was also present. Jamiat e Islami was primarily composed of Tajiks. In the spring of 1974, the police came to Kabul University to arrest Rabbani for his pro-Islamic stance, but with the help of his students the police were unable to capture him, and he managed to escape to the countryside. In Pakistan, Rabbani gathered important people and established the party. Saeed Nurullah Ahmad, who was then a young Muslim in the University of Kabul, became the general secretary of the party and, later, its deputy chief. Rabbani alongside Ahmad Shah Massoud and others planned to take action either against the Daoud government or people who they deemed communist in 1975, but failed. Among ourselves we decided that Daoud personally was not a communist, but a Muslim, surrounded by communists, who should be eliminated. For that purpose we prepared a list of 80 military and civilian communists and instructed our companions to carry it out. Surprisingly news of the failure of the uprising in Logman and other regions reached us in Peshawar. When the Soviets intervened in 1979, Rabbani helped lead Jamiat e Islamian resistance to the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan regime. Rabbani's forces were the first Mujahideen elements to enter Kabul in 1992 when the PDPA government fell from power. He took over as president from 1992 in accordance to the Peshawar Accords. Rabbani was the third ethnic Tajik leader of modern Afghanistan after Habibullah Kalakani in 1929 and Abdul Qadir in 1978. His rule was limited since the country was fractured by civil war between different sides. Rabbani was forced to flee following the Taliban's conquest of Kabul in 1996. Rabbani operated his government in exile, following the establishment of the Taliban rule of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. 
In this period between 1996 and 2001, the Rabbani government of the Islamic State of Afghanistan remained the internationally recognized government, despite only controlling about 10% of Afghan territory. For the next five years, he and the Northern Alliance, commanded by Ahmad Shah Massoud and others, were busy fighting the Taliban until the 2001 U.S.-led Operation Enduring Freedom in which the Taliban government was toppled. Rabbani was head of Afghanistan's High Peace Council, which had been formed in 2010 to initiate peace talks with the Taliban and other groups in the insurgency, until his death. Rabbani was killed in a suicide bombing at his home in Kabul on September 20, 2011, his 71st birthday. Two men posing as Taliban representatives approached him to offer a hug and detonated their explosives. At least one of them had hidden the explosives in his turban. The suicide bomber claimed to be a Taliban commander, said he bore a very important and positive message from Taliban leaders in Pakistan, and said he wanted to discuss peace with Rabani. Four other members of Afghanistan's High Peace Council were also killed in the blast. Rabani was buried in the Wazir Akbar Khan Cemetery. Afghan officials blamed the Kuwait Ashura, which is the leadership of the Afghan Taliban hiding in the affluent satellite town of Kuwait in Pakistan. The Pakistani government confirmed that Rabani's assassination was linked to Afghan refugees in Pakistan. A senior Pakistani official stated that over 90% of terrorist attacks in Pakistan are traced back to Afghan elements and that their presence in the country was an important issue for Pakistan, and a problem for Afghanistan. Pakistani Foreign Minister Hina Rabani Kar said that we are not responsible if Afghan refugees cross the border and entered Kabul, stayed in a guest house and attacked Professor Rabani. In 2011, just days before he died, Rabani was trying to persuade Islamic scholars to issue a religious edict banning suicide bombings. The former president's 29-year-old daughter said in an interview that her father died shortly after he spoke at a conference on Islamic awakening in Tehran. Right before he was assassinated, he talked about the suicide bombing issue, Fatima Rabani told Reuters. He called on all Islamic scholars in the conference to release a fatwa against the tactic. Government Minister Nemachullah Sharani said Rabani is irreplaceable because he had relations with all these tribes. United States President Barack Obama and several NATO military leaders condemned the assassination. Japan also offered its condolences at the 66th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Afghan President Hamid Karzai cut short his trip for the general debate of the 66th session of the United Nations General Assembly following his assassination. Rabani's son Salahuddin then took over chairmanship of the High Peace Council from his father. Thanks for watching.